where is quantum computing going to have um, the most disruptive soonest, in your opinion? Well, it's a race. So will we have, you know, Shor's algorithm, which is an algorithm designed by Peter Shor in 1994 to effectively reverse private keys, right? So you have a public encryption key and I can basically guess your private key, right? By doing some really complicated math, okay? Um, will that be happen before one of these machines gets combined with AI? Will those two happen before one of these machines does some sort of one-to-one -one model that is the next great material science and now you have an invisibility cloak or whatever? Like what I like to call it, and, and this is one of the books I've been working on the entire time I've been, and probably for another five years, is called um, Endless Impossibilities, right? And, and I think that that really describes you know, what these machines, it's like, we don't even know. Let's go back to the first computer. Like, let's go all the way back to like Babbage, right? Okay, what's it gonna do? Oh, it's gonna do some of the census machines, right? Kind of move forward through history. Yeah, basic think, math problems. Think back to the ENIAC. And like, you know, of course, there was a lot of government research and stuff around it, so they knew what they were gonna do with it. But what if I just said, oh, there's a thing called the computer, John. You're like, what does it do? That's the yeah. phase we're in of quantum computing. You know, these machines aren't about the past, they're about the future. This is godlike, alien-like technology. If you listen to somebody like Jordy Rose, who was one of the D-Way founders, he said, you know, being at a quantum computer is like kneeling at the foot of an alien god or whatever, <laughs> and all these crazy things. It is this complete mystery. It is putting us in touch with the very fabric of the universe to calculate things on. I mean, right? Like, yeah. no wonder you don't understand it. I don't understand it. Like, I'm writing software and working with it, and I'm working with physicists working on the hardware around the world, and there are tons of areas where they'll be like, don't know. For me, as an entrepreneur, I was wanting a really big challenge. Robotics, biohacking, something. I fell in love with quantum and, and what I think is the eventual emergence of, of quantum and AI as an area I could apply the skills I have to that has plenty for me to learn. <laughs> Did not have a problem finding who could be a mentor, right? <laughs> Pretty much anybody. <laughs> Are you a college professor knows about physics? I'd like to learn from you, right? Like everybody. Um, and it's been one of the biggest um, intellectual challenges of my career. And I just every day kind of struggle swimming with it. My wife calls it my science fiction company. She calls it my sci-fi company. She's like, after this, no more sci-fi companies. <laughs> but you know, she's always like, she, 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 it's funny because you know, one of my friends, you know, we were somewhere the other night, she is, and, and she'll tell you. When people ask me, well, what, what does this company do? She's like, oh, sci-fi stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but it is. Quantum computing and artificial intelligence represent everything we've seen in every movie about utopian or dystopian futures. You're in the birth of it right now. It is the greatest time to be alive in the history of mankind. If you enjoyed this clip, we've got more where that came from. Be sure to check out my full conversation with Whirly. And one of the best ways you can support us is to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss our interviews and short videos as they come out each week.